Hi, my name is Brayden, and I usually make videos about puzzles. Today, though, I'm making a video about something that's puzzle adjacent, so it's not quite a puzzle, but it feels similar. I've been working on this Celtic Knot editor using Daniel L. Isdell's uh, Clan Badge Celtic Knot font, um, and I want to show this off. I'm recording this right now in 1280 by 720, even though my monitor is 1920 by 1080, just so you can see this properly. Um, and in this video, I'll show off the functionality of my version 0.3. If anyone wants to know more, I can talk more about it in the future, but for now, I'll just be showing off the functionality, otherwise this video will be very, very long. <laughs> so to start off, uh, if you click on any tile in the grid with the left mouse button, as I'm doing right now, it changes the left coordinate right here. Uh, a similar thing happens with the right mouse button and the right coordinate. When you hit show, it highlights. When you hit hide, it unhighlights. But when you hit reset, it also unhighlights but resets the coordinates. Just like that. Now if you notice, when you click any, uh, when you click show, all these generate buttons highlight. So let me go right here. So let's try generating no symmetry. Alright, there's a knot with no symmetry. That was quick. I can keep generating them. And there's no symmetry in these knots. Any symmetry is accidental and random. Then I can hit horizontal reflection which uh, has mirror symmetry across the horizontal line of the selection, not of the entire knot itself, just the selection. Um, vertical reflection does exactly the same thing. Horizontal and vertical does um, both the horizontal line and the vertical line. Uh, Two-way rotational symmetry um, has, uh, if you were to imagine a point at the center of the selection, again, not a point at the center of the entire knot, but a point at the center of the selection, then if you rotate the entire thing by 180 degrees, it should go back exactly to where it was before. That's two-way rotational symmetry. Four-way rotational symmetry is exactly the same thing, but with 90 degrees and only with squares. So, so two-way rotational also works with rectangles. As you can see here, four-way rotational does not enable. So that works. Um, as well, all the other ones other than four-way are also uh, used in rectangles and not uh, just squares, but four-way is only squares. Now something interesting happens when I go back to this square right here. Four-way is still not allowed, and now all the others are also not allowed. Why is that? Well, it's because the boundaries around this selection don't allow for these types of symmetry. So as you can see uh, on the top boundary of the selection, it's all the empty connection right there. But on the bottom of the selection, uh, there's a bunch of different connections going through. So there's no possible way to make any of these symmetries but I can keep generating no symmetry if I want to, because this, um, this program allows for subknot editing. So let me show you that. So right here, if I decide that, I don't know, I like it, but I don't really like the central part right there. Yeah, I want to change that. So I can change this to use all these types of symmetries, because they all work with the boundary conditions of the selection. However, four-way does not work. So I can generate the horizontal mirror symmetry that breaks the vertical mirror symmetry. I can also generate vertical mirror symmetry that breaks the horizontal. So that's interesting. The outside actually has horizontal and vertical mirror symmetry, but the inside only has vertical mirror symmetry. I can also have two-way rotational. I think that looks pretty good. But actually, I want to break the symmetry completely. Let's do that. Yeah, how about that, and then let's do the same thing down here, but obviously it'll be completely different. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. All right, so I just made a knot that I really like, but how do I save it? Well, I go into the export box, select all, copy. Let me open a new instance of Notepad right here, and I hope it's in the right font. Ah, perfect. So I'll copy that in, and there we go. That's our knot. Oh, but wait a second, it's in the wrong font. Okay, that's an easy fix. Let's just go to the Celtic Knot font. And there's our knot. So as you can see, I'll just close that. So as you can see, uh, the plain text that you see in the export and the actual knot that you see in the grid are actually one and the same. It's just different fonts. So that's a very easy way of saving and exporting your knot. But what if I saved it, I like it, but I want to start fresh. I can regenerate the grid. There we go. But I can also regenerate the grid to be a different size. Let's go four by two. Let's say, for example, I wanted to make 
let's say a border for some letterhead that I was making. Sure. So that looks like a nice one. I can pattern this all around my letterhead and uh, perfect, I like it. So again, I just have to copy and paste this in the export box and there we go. Or I can make something really big. Let's go 10 by 15. So if I show that, no symmetry. Now if you notice, this one's larger. And because it's larger, you'll notice on the bottom left, it says generating no symmetry attempt blank out of 10,000. And it updates every 500. So it's trying, and every time it tries, it probably fails a few times. And it probably fails a few thousand times, if you notice. Well, no, I guess this size is okay for it to not fail a few thousand times, but it typically fails at least a few times. If I make it bigger, it'll completely fail, because it will reach the limit of 10,000. Now, 10,000 is an arbitrary limit that I set in the source code. You cannot change it in the application itself, but I can change it in the source code at any time that I want. Let's make it 14 by 15. That one usually fails. So I will show that. Unfortunately, this is bigger than the recording area, but that's okay. So I will generate no symmetry there. If you notice, the numbers are getting higher in the attempts. Let's wait till it fails. Ah, perfect, it failed. The specified knot was not able to be generated in 10,000 attempts. Perfect. I mean, not perfect because it failed, but it's nice to know that this never runs an infinite loop. It always stops. And it runs pretty quickly up to 10,000. So I could change that to be higher, but depending on the system, uh, people's computers might not be as fast, so I thought 10,000 is a good trade-off there. Uh, and most of the time, people will not be making these giant knots. And if you do, you might be making a giant knot in segments. So you might make that there. You might make that there. And then you can connect them up like this. I think that's kind of cool. And again, you can export this right here. So I think that's all the features. I'll just put this back to 8x8, eight eight, the default. Um, I think that's all the features so far that I've added. Um, as I said, I just wanted this video to go into what the features do. If anyone wants to know more, um, then I can definitely talk more about it. Um, but for now, this is my Celtic Knot Editor. Thank you so much for watching.